Hello, my name is Chad Jones. I'm Vice President Strategy and Product Management with Dynamic Ops. Thank you for joining us. Today, we'll be looking at the extensibility of the Dynamic Ops Cloud Automation Center. You know, everyone wants self-service from their cloud. The concept of a VM vending machine is quite appealing. Go in, push a button, and you get your virtual machine. Uh, however, every environment is different. Every business unit has different processes they need to apply to that overall workflow. You need to leverage existing tools that are inside of your environment that feed information into that process. You know, so when you start considering that, the VM vending machine kind of falls down. Because if I like Coke and Diet Coke, maybe that vending machine's good for me. But if I walk up and I want a Pepsi, well, that vending machine's really not going to help me. You should be able to go up, let it know who you are, and it gives you the choices you need to get your job done. It shouldn't also require an army of developers and months of time to actually perform that level of integration or customization. With Dynamic Ops, we allow you to enable, adapt, and extend the private cloud so that it meets your business needs. We've got a lot to show you, so let's get to it. What we're going to do today is show you two use cases. The first is how to extend the workflow to integrate with something like Twitter be able to get a notification when a virtual machine has been provisioned. The second use case we're going to show you is about how to actually add right mouse click menus that kick off workflows to do any number of actions. So when we look at the first use case, being able to integrate with Twitter, we'll go into our design center. This is our visual tool for extending the dynamic ops workflows. And you'll notice that if I go into load, I'm going to go ahead and open up our main workflow here. Now, this workflow stub, as we call that, a placeholder inside of the main workflow, allows me to inject customized code and activities. So now, I'll go ahead and say, OK. This will talk to our central repository and bring in the actual workflow logic. So if I come in to our interface and look at the custom activity, what you're seeing here is, if I double click into here, is our ability to tie into Twitter. Now we have our Twitter status update activity that has been injected into this workflow. And now we pull information, first of all, from the actual property bag, our list of properties that are associated with that virtual machine. And then we're able to go in, log any sort of activity. And here is our Twitter status update activity. Now, inside of that, it will read the property bag. And as it goes through this workflow, it will send an update to Twitter based upon the data that is inside of those properties. So if I go into our Dynamic Ops Automation Center and go into my Enterprise Administrator and actually look at our blueprints where we instantiate these uh, custom workflows, and I come down to our blueprint for Zen uh, Rel Apache. You notice it does say Twitter here. Go ahead and go into Edit. What you'll notice are two custom properties that trigger the Twitter workflow and feed information into it. So first of all, we have the external workflow stub, which is machine provision. That means go ahead and run this workflow as an option. You can actually turn on and off the customized workflows. So in this case, we're going to say, go ahead and run it. So we'll execute that Twitter workflow. And then underneath that, we've put in a custom property that says guest name. Now we use this demonstration in VM world. That's why you see this here. But underneath here, we have a key value pair that allows me to prompt the user for input of a text field. And that will be used inside of the Twitter feed as well. So now if I go into my user's interface, I'll go into self-service. And I'll go down to request a machine. And now under request a machine, I'll go ahead and look for my rel six provisioning blueprint. And we'll notice we have that right here, Zen rel. I'll go ahead and click on that. And then you'll notice right here we have this vmworld.guestname. That was the key value pair that we just saw inside of the enterprise portal. So now I'll go ahead and enter in, instead of valued guest, I'll enter in you know, Chad Jones, 
so I can customize this actual workflow. And I'll say OK. So now what will happen is on the back end, it's going to take that information, kick off the provisioning workflow as we normally do, and then once it's done provisioning that machine, what we'll actually get is a Twitter feed alert that will pop up in the middle of our uh, interface here that tells us, yeah, and tells Twitter as well, that the machine has been provisioned. And as an extra bonus, we've put that customization of the Twitter feed has shown up on the screen. Now, this is just a quick update pulling from the actual Twitter feed from our own Twitter account. But this can go out to any Twitter account that you would like, maybe to update your administrators when something's been provisioned, or to update some other form of system that can consume that information. But the point is that we were able to easily and quickly customize this workflow to tie into a third-party system like Twitter. And really, that system can be anything. It could be your own proprietary CMDB. It could be Remedy. It could be ServiceNow. It's really up to you. But we've provided you a way to easily do that. Now, it's not just for the workflows that we're able to do extensibility. The spectrum's pretty wide. The next use case that we're going to show you is really in a user-initiated action from a right mouse click menu. So now, if we close our Twitter box, and we come down and look at my machines as a user, if I look at SharePoint 001, you'll notice the right mouse click menu here has these four items. If I go to SharePoint 3, there's a different set here. Again, that's all based upon the user's permissions. But you know what? What if I want to enable the ability to change something on those machines through one of these actions? Well, we can do that pretty easily as a custom action here. So what we'll do is first go back to our Design Center. And Design Center will bring up a custom workflow for a right mouse click menu. Now, as we come in, we'll go ahead and select this workflow machine menu. Go ahead and say OK. And now, if we click inside of our flowcharts here, there's some of our custom logic. What you'll find here is I have a very basic activity that's going to paint the background of a machine red or set it to blue. We can do either one of those. So instead of actually having a user input whether they want red or blue into this activity, we'll make it a choice on their right mouse click menu. Now this will actually change the background color to red or blue depending upon what they want to do. Now this can easily be extended to any type of action. You know, whether you want to be able to connect to a different network, or maybe send messages, or you know, change uh, the sizing of your screen resolution. Literally anything can be coded into this particular system. If I go back into my enterprise portal as my enterprise administrator, and into Global Blueprints, we're going to go ahead and go into the SharePoint 2010 Blueprint. Now if I go in and edit these properties, and I go into the security, what you're going to see is that I now have two additional options, one for red and one for blue. Now, they're unchecked right now because these are available for assignment but have not been assigned to this blueprint yet. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is say red and blue. Let's go ahead and check those for my users. Now, if I just allow that to go and say OK, for every new user that comes on, for every new workflow that uses that blueprint, they'll get the option for red or blue. But you know what? I probably want to have that option be applied to the rest of my user community that uses this blueprint. So what I'll do is go ahead and check the apply security changes to existing machines from this blueprint. So that will retrofit all of those previously created machines from this blueprint with the option to change the background to red or blue with your custom menu. And I'll go ahead and say OK. So now this will update the system apply those right mouse click menus, and we're done. So if I go back to my user and just click refresh, come back into my machines, and where before we saw that there weren't any of those right mouse click menus, if we now look at the SharePoint menu, you'll notice down here we have red and blue are now an option. So now that user could click either one of those custom workflows and kick off that custom activity 
based upon whatever your environment needs. Whether it needs to talk to other systems, perform action inside of the virtual container itself, speak to external clouds, it's really up to you. But the customization is just that easy. So as we've seen, Dynamic Ops provides you with a highly customizable environment that doesn't require an army of developers or months of time to make a business relevant cloud. We can enable the cloud very quickly through our out of the box capabilities, adapt that to your environment as we've seen through the demonstration today, and then further extend that through our cloud development kit. With these capabilities, Dynamic Ops provides the most robust business relevant cloud system on the market today and provides the fastest time to cloud value. So thanks for joining us today. I hope this video was informative for you. There's many more like it at dynamicops.com. My name's Chad Jones. We'll see you soon.